Hey guys, what's up? It's Ernest Gung here, and today we have a very special video featuring a very special guest and a personal good friend of mine coming all the way from the UK, Matthew Baxter. Hi there. So Matt is the guy, the brains behind the super cheap guides. He's a published author who's written three delightfully helpful and detailed travel guidebooks about Japan filled with a lot of amazing information for any budget traveler out there looking to get the best value. His first book I have right here is Super Cheap Japan. And then after, he wanted to cover extensively my favorite city, Super Cheap Tokyo. And now most recently just released, was it last week? Yeah, just last week. Nice. Super Cheap Hokkaido. So now if you're watching this video guys and you're wondering how did Matthew and I first met, it was actually back in October 2015, we met at a language exchange in Toronto and we got paired up together and we ended up just being good friends because we had shared goals, common interests, we were both trying to learn Japanese at that time and we've always wanted to get together and work on a project together. So Matt, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how did this all start with super cheap guides? Yeah, um, so I lived across the world. I uh, lived in Canada, I uh, lived in Australia, uh, New Zealand and Japan of course. And so I lived for about five years but I kind of keep wow. on coming back. So I thought okay, we want to turn this passion into something kind of really useful and productive. It would be a great idea to make some books um, to help other people travel in Japan um, on the cheap. I always used to go on the cheap in Japan. And yeah, it's really something that um, I've become really knowledgeable about. And you know, people who are friends in Japan, they say, you know, I know more than them about Japan. So it's, yeah, it's really good. Yeah, I know what you mean. I think I've seen more Japan than most of my Japanese friends. Mm. But at the same time, a lot of my Japanese friends who travel to Canada have yeah. seen so much more of Canada than I have ever seen. Totally. Same with London as well. Totally, yeah. <laughs> so Matthew, how does it feel to be my first special guest on this YouTube channel? Oh, it's awesome, thanks. Yeah, great not to be paying out for any hotel as well. Thank <laughs> you very much. As my book says, you know, travel on the cheap. Yeah, it's great to be here. Um, I think it's yeah, really passionate about traveling in Japan. I'm really happy to talk about my books. I'm really passionate about it. Spent lots of time researching and writing it. Uh, it's great to be on this channel. I hope you yeah, become really popular um, on YouTube. Uh, you've got a lot to contribute as well. So there's so much to learn about traveling in Japan. So Matt, how many times have you been to Japan and what brings you back here? Oh, uh, well, really, I've kind of um, lost count of the number of times. It's got to be in the double figures now. I keep on coming back. Really love the country. Food is great. Uh, people yeah. are nice. Culture and history is really interesting. Um, sure. So I just keep on coming back. How about you? I've been to Japan at least 14 times before I moved here and I keep coming back because I was learning Japanese so I wanted to see if I was getting any better. So Matt, what's the next big project that you're working on now? Uh, what I really want to do next is uh, work on other prefectures, other countries as well. Um, so I've done Hokkaido. Yep. And I've done uh, Tokyo and Kanto. Yep. So next I want to expand out into places like Kyushu and maybe other prefectures as well. Oh nice. And then eventually maybe do New Zealand and Taiwan. Well I hope you do Kyushu next, it's actually my favourite region so mm. I would look forward to that book. Awesome. So Matt, what's your favourite place in Japan and where would you recommend travellers to go? Uh, for me my favourite place is a town called Shimokitazawa. It's a really cool town. It's kind of so cool, I don't want to recommend it to people. It's kind of a special place. It's really like a maze of little streets, loads of different types of cafes, restaurants, bars, lots of second-hand shops. It's a really cool town, so I definitely recommend that. So I've been to Shimokirazawa myself. It's definitely a very cool place. I agree with everything you've said. You guys should definitely check it out. I highly recommend it. But for those viewers out there watching this video, and if you've never been to Shimokirazawa, how can one get there? Yeah, well, it's a pretty easy place to get to. Um, from Shinjuku, I take the Odaku line, and from Shibuya, I take the Keio Inokashiro line. How about you? For me, Tokyo is my favorite city, mm -hmm. but specifically in Tokyo, I like Odaiba and Aoyama. Aoyama because it's just a nice feel, environment. It's the Japanese say it's an oshare. Mm -hmm. And for me, Odaiba because it's futuristic, it's an artificial island, but it has this really cool part of Tokyo that you won't really see anywhere else. So Matt, I have to ask, yeah. what's your favorite drink in Japan? Well, when I first got here, it was definitely a drink called Kalpis. Nice. Now I really like the cheap jasmine and green teas. So it's sometimes as cheap as about 89 yen from the drugstores. Uh, it's really good. And you really you just can't tell the difference unless you're a tea expert. Um, so it doesn't matter, you just get the cheap one. And of course, um, as you know, there are convenies or convenience stores everywhere. Yep. Um, so in the evening, if you want to get a cheap alcoholic drink, a highball or a beer, go to these conven convenience stores and get a cheap drink. 
And that's what you recommend in your guidebooks too, right? Definitely, yeah. And I've got all the drugstores around the tourist areas listed and the convenience as well. Um, so it's easy to find them. Yeah. How about you? What's your favorite drink? My favorite drink is Kelpfis or CC Lemon. And I think that's the reason why I moved to Japan because I can get them here so much cheaper than I could back in Canada. Mm. Yeah, CC Lemon. Oh, it's not. Uh, well, you're British, so it doesn't really matter, <laughs> right? Yeah, I like my lemon tea. <laughs> so what's your favorite restaurant in Japan at? Uh, typical question. Uh, I'd probably have to say Yayoi Ken. Um, sometimes it's called Yayoi in the West. It's a really cool Teshoku restaurant across Japan. Mm. Things that when you think about Teshoku, you usually think of really expensive restaurants, you know, kimono ladies, right. tatami mats and all that. Mm. But actually, uh, it's a really cheap restaurant um, compared to most places. So it's about 700 to 900 yen for a set. And that includes rice, tea and the Japanese meal. So it could be Japanese steak, it could be a nabe, which is a hot pot. And you can try lots of different things, really. Uh, that's probably the best thing, is the rice is free. Mm. As much as you like, so stuff yourself for a big lunch. And it's a free tea as well. That's pretty nice. And I do really love Kokoichi as well. It's my favourite curry house. So oh. it's a little bit expensive, but just try once. At least once, you have to. Yeah. How expensive are we talking about? Um, with salad, it's about 1,000 yen. Um, but if you go really cheap, you just have the curry sauce and rice, it's about 500-600 yen. Oh, that's not Depending bad. on the rice size, yeah. Uh, so how about your favourite restaurant? Oh man, that is a hard question, because in Japan, there's so much good food everywhere, you can't really go wrong. So if I had to choose from my favourite restaurants, I'd have to say it's either Hinoya Curry or Gogo Curry. Uh, so I've never been to Gogo Curry, and I oh, just refuse out. to. Uh, just Kokoichi is my, my one. I did actually go to Hinoya Curry a few days ago. Oh, good. I actually listened to your recommendation. Finally. So there's a bit of advice, you know, be open to people's recommendations. Um, but yeah, still, Coco Ichi is best. You know what? I've been to Coco Ichi. I've had it. The curry for me is a bit watery, so I prefer Hinoya or Gogo. So to me, he, Coco Curry is no-no curry. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He's Canadian. I'm British. Keep in mind, curry. guys, he's British and, you know, they're not really known for their food culture, right guys? <laughs> So Matt, besides checking out these awesome guides of yours, what would you recommend to first-time travelers coming to Japan? Oh yeah, good question. So um, Japan has become a lot easier to travel around in the last few years. I remember yeah. uh, when I first came, no one could speak English. You were kind of lost at most restaurants. Um, now things are so much better, like you've got translation apps, so you can mm. just point your camera at the kanji, the, the Japanese characters, and it will tell you what's on the menu. Um, or if you go to Exchange of Japan Rail Pass, right. they speak English now. There'll be English signs in all the stations and all the maps. But particularly outside Tokyo, you just didn't have any English at all. What do you think? Well, so for me, when I first started traveling to Japan in the mid-2000s, and now it's a very different place, it's gone so much easier for people who don't speak any Japanese. And if you're an English speaker traveling here and you're worried that you can't survive, uh, don't worry about it, things have changed quite a bit. It's so much easier to even get around around the country now. And when I was traveling here, we didn't have Google Maps, we didn't have smartphones with data, so we were still taking paper maps and trying to memorize the roads. And one other thing is that a lot of people say that Wi-Fi is not good in Japan, and that was the case about one to two years ago. And the last six months, it's dramatically changed. And right. You get Wi-Fi in pretty much any tourist destination, even if it's like a B-list of tourist destinations, yeah, yeah. but not many foreigners go, there'll be Wi-Fi. Right. Yeah. But what I would recommend is because the world's so interconnected and dependent on internet and data now, is just to rent the pocket Wi-Fi mm -hmm. or get a data SIM card. It's just so cheap. You just don't want to be in a situation where you're stuck with Wi-Fi. But I agree with what Matt's saying mm -hmm. here because back when I was traveling, even five years ago, and this was kind of when smartphones were becoming common. It was just so hard to find a common Wi-Fi to depend on. Like now, Family Mart, the convenience stores have it, McDonald's, Starbucks. But five, six years ago, you think McDonald's and Starbucks would have these? They didn't offer any Wi-Fi for people. Yeah, I mean, there was a point where you had to, like, subscribe at Starbucks. Oh, yeah. So it's like, and when in, in England, when, where these kind of things are rubbish, yeah, yeah, it was all yeah, free and yeah. anyone could do it. You could stand outside Starbucks and yep. use it. In Japan, you had to join some program or something. And what was worse, it was all written in Japanese. So yes, you couldn't exactly. even turn it into English yeah. to just fake, put a fake email. So Matt, any last words or comments you'd like to share with the audience? Yeah, cheers. Um, so if you're interested in going to Japan on a cheap, uh, please check out my books. Uh, they're available on Amazon or mm -hmm. at any good bookshops. And um, please uh, check me out on uh, Facebook and Instagram at uh, Super Cheap Guys. And uh, as a little gift to you guys, uh, I'm giving you a little discount uh, on my ebooks. 
So please uh, subscribe to Ernest's uh, channel and head to my website at supercheapguys.com and put the code LIFE IN JAPAN and you get 20% off. Oh wow, nice. Perfect. So if you guys are interested in getting a copy of Matt's books, I'll be sure to leave a link in the video description down below. Be sure to take advantage of the coupon code that he just said. And of course, check out his social profiles, follow him for all the cool stuff, and get tips on traveling to Japan on his website. I've known Matt for a few years. He's definitely put in a lot of work, time, research into putting these guidebooks together. So I definitely recommend checking out these books if you're coming to Japan. So that concludes our chat for today. Thank you guys all so much for watching and thank you Matt for being in the video today. Yeah, thanks so much. It's been a lot of fun. So comment down below guys if you have questions for Matt and I. Hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe for more coffee chats and guest speaker videos. With that, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. Peace. So Matt, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how did Super Cheap Guides all start? Let's start again. <laughs>